What's going on everyone? Welcome to Rob's house. Today we're gonna to be doing some work on the Mustang and we're not just swapping out interior pieces this time to make it look cooler and putting carbon fiber stuff, no. Today, the Mustang gets more boost. Check it out. Finally in the mail. I ordered this about three months ago. It finally came in. This is the phase two supercharger upgrade kit for my phase one uh, stage three Roush Mustang. Uh, basically what it consists of, or just, it's, it's a pretty simple install. Um, we got some new spark plugs here, some iridium spark plugs. This is an 80 millimeter supercharger pulley uh, for the blower. So what's cool about this kit with this pulley is I actually don't even have to change the belt. I can use the same belt. It's not, an, it's not big enough of a difference to necessitate uh, a belt change. Um, so we can just unbolt the other pulley, bolt this one on. And then this is a fuel pump booster. So we're actually gonna plug this in in line um, the factory fuel pump on this car can push enough fuel to keep up with the additional boost that we're going to be pushing. I think right now that the car pushes around 9 or 10 pounds of boost, it'll be pushing about 12, if I remember my numbers correctly, with this pulley. So basically, with a pulse with modulated fuel pump system, which is what we have in this car, uh, the ECU will basically change the uh, frequency sent to the fuel pump to tell it to basically either provide more or less fueling. Um, this fuel pump booster controller, whatever you want to call this thing. It's basically just a fuel pump booster. It plugs in in line and it's going to modify the amount, basically at, tell the, tell the pump to provide more fuel uh, than what we would get from the factory. And the reason for this is we're pushing more boost. So we're going to need more fuel to keep up with it so that we maintain a proper uh, air to fuel ratio. Um, what we also have over here is a voucher. This voucher is for a tune. Um, we will go to a, uh, a certified uh, Roush dealership, a Roush Performance certified uh, dealership or shop. They will flash the phase two tune onto the car for us. So what I have planned for today is to just install this kit. Uh, probably in this video, we'll also, uh, I'll, I'll give you my reactions when, after I take it to a dealership, have them flash the tune. Uh, this should bring the car from, the car is rated for 670 horsepower from the factory. This phase two kit will bring it up to 727. These are estimates, and they're also estimates at the crank, so it's not how much you're putting down to the wheels. Uh, what I plan to do in a follow-up video, so in this video, we'll, we'll install this kit, uh, we'll go to the dealership, we'll get my reaction to how the car feels after we install this kit, and then in a follow-up video, what I plan on doing is uh, going over to Freedom Motor Works. I've already downloaded the phase one tune. I'm gonna download the phase two tune with my HP tuners device. Take that over to Freedom Motor Works to have JT take a look at it and he can see what they what they changed, what they messed with. And we're gonna see if we can make some more power. I know that the factory uh, tunes on these are pretty conservative. It makes sense from the standpoint like Roush is a, is a shop located in a fixed location and they have no idea where their cars are gonna be sent. Right, so they, it makes sense that they'd want to have a pretty conservative tune and account for changes in climate, whether it be elevation, whether it be humidity, uh, temperature. You know, if it, if the car is going to Texas, it's going to experience hotter experience hotter temps on average than if it's going to say upstate New York, for example, or Boston or something like that. Uh, this car actually, I bought this car in Massachusetts, so this car was from up north, uh, and it now lives in the south. You know, like I said, for this video, we'll install this kit. We'll we'll see how it does with the factory tune compared to the Phase One factory tune, and then in a future video, we'll take it over to Freedom Motor Works and see what we can optimize for. Also, give you a baseline horsepower reading at the rear wheels, so you can see uh, roughly what a Phase Two kit would put down to the rear wheels. I actually have not dynoed it um, with the phase one kit, so I don't know how much I'm putting down to the wheels. According to the forums, it's just shy of 600. I don't know how accurate that is. I've just seen some people post some numbers of them making around 590 rear wheel horsepower with the phase one setup uh, on a 15 to 17 Mustang. This is a 2015. Um, so, you know, like I said, we'll do a baseline pull with the phase two kit uh, at Freedom Motor Works in the next video, and then we'll we'll optimize from there. If we move over to the car, all right, so this is what the engine bay of my Mustang looks like. Um, as you can see, this side's pretty wide open. We do have to change spark plugs, so I'm gonna have to take some of these vacuum lines off. I'm gonna have to take these valve covers off on both sides. In order to, this side is completely obstructed by the air intake. So what I'm gonna have to do is at minimum, I'm going to have to take this uh, mid tube off of the air intake, and I think I'm also going to have to take the throttle body off. I'll show you guys uh, kind of what it looks like to get the spark plugs out. I know that the back ones are going to be kind of a pain in the ass. The one that's back here, uh, one of the videos I was watching, they were saying you got to kind of peel this 
uh, this heat insulation part off just to be able to get your ratchet in there. And I'll probably have to use a swivel socket. But anyway, uh, let me get this disassembled and I'll report back uh, when all is said and done. Uh, I'll give you guys a time lapse of what that looks like to take everything apart. All right guys, we made some progress. So um, pretty much got everything off that I need to take off in order to access the uh, coil packs and the spark plugs. Um, I've taken one out already, as you can see. If you look down there, you can see the empty hole. It's pretty simple. I basically just took the throttle body and you know part of the intake off so that I could expose all of the, uh, ignition, all of the uh, ignition coils. Um, seven millimeter nut here, undo that, you know, un unplug the coil and it just pulls right out. The spark plug, which was down there, just use a spark plug socket to remove. I have one right here. It's got a hole in it so that it can go over top of the plug. Here's the old plug. Um, doesn't look too bad. The car has about 50,000 miles on it and never had a spark plug change. So, you know, I'm happy with that. Uh, here's the new uh, Iridium plugs. Uh, I'm just gonna gap them. It does, there is a notice. Uh, on the other side here that says to gap them to 0.9 millimeters. I have a gapper tool. I'll just make sure that this is gapped appropriately before I reinstall it. Uh, and then it's just literally, you know, thread that back in and um, torque it to, I think 12, 12 pound feet is the factory torque spec. So I'll just use a torque wrench to do that. And uh, that's it. So I gotta do uh, all eight of those. Uh, then we'll work on the supercharger pulleys. There's a tensioner down there. It's kind of hard to see, but it's like straight down where my where my finger's pointing. That is the belt tensioner. Uh, we'll just put a socket on that, slack the belt, uh, pull our belt off here, undo these uh, these six screws, and then I actually just went to Advanced Auto Parts and got. I just rented a. Uh, this is a gear puller, but it's the same thing It's a, as a pulley puller. Uh, basically, it's you know a three-arm claw that will grip uh, the back of the pulley. So it'll grip right back here and then push on the uh, center to kind of like pry it off. It'll be, since, since this is torqued on and it's been torqued on for 50,000 miles, I highly doubt I'm gonna be able to get it off with my hand. I could hit it with a hammer or something, but I don't wanna risk messing up the actual supercharger itself. Uh, so let me get the rest of the spark plugs done. Then we'll move over to uh, to the supercharger uh, pulley. Once all that's said and done, we'll move to the back of the car and we'll do the fuel pump.
All right, guys, uh, we're about halfway done with the install. All the spark plugs are done. Everything there is reinstalled appropriately. I just removed the uh, belt for the supercharger. Um, there's the, the, the tensioner down there, right where my finger is. You can see that, see that bolt right there? That's a tensioner. You're gonna turn it uh, in the clockwise direction. Uh, that will slack the belt. The way that I found to get the belt off was I kind of wiggled this side off the pulley a little bit and then uh, actually took it off of this idler. Uh, and then it was easy to, to get this side up and over the pulley. So now I'm just gonna um, remove these. Uh, I'm just gonna remove the bolts from the pulley now, use the pulley removal tool, swap that over, and I'll report back when I'm done and we can move on to the fuel pump booster. I don't think I'm gonna actually uh, time-lapse this particular portion because I'd be standing in front of the camera the whole time. So I don't think it would be very useful, but basically all I'm gonna do now that the belt's off, like I said, is just undo those bolts and just use a pulley removal tool to to get that pulley off, you know, push, push the new pulley on and bolt it into place. Um, they actually, the manual says not to, it says to use between eight and 12 Newton meters of torque, which is only like six pound feet or whatever. So you don't really torque uh, these bolts very much, but you do put Loctite on them. So I'll, I'll do that and then I'll report back. All right, guys, here's the stock uh, phase one 85 millimeter pulley. You can compare it to the new one um, and see that the new one is a little bit smaller. If I stack them, you can kind of see it. It's a bit smaller. I actually didn't even need the pulley removal tool. It just slid right off. Uh, bad news is I'm dumb and I took the belt off first. I, I didn't realize that A, these these bolts weren't even torqued on very much, but obviously this thing just like free spins without a belt on it. Um, so I put the belt back on, undid the screws, and then took the belt back off, pulled the pulley off. So now I'll put the new pulley on, uh, put some Loctite on those screws, get it all reinstalled. Uh, and then we'll move to the fuel pump. So I'll be right back. All right, guys, check it out. So underneath the back bench row of seating, uh, this right here is actually where the fuel pump is connected. So all you gotta do for the phase two kit uh, is just unplug it and plug in the fuel pump booster in line. Oh, sorry. All you gotta do is plug the fuel pump booster in line and then mount the, mount the pump booster somewhere in the trunk uh, and ground it. So there is a ground wire, so just find a bolt to ground it to. And that's pretty much it. That's, that's all you gotta do. It's a pretty simple installation. I'm just gonna wrap things up. Everything is still, uh, well, the engine bay's back together at least, kind of. I actually, unfortunately, I broke one of the bolts on the uh, supercharger pulley, so I might have to get someone's help drilling that out, which is a bummer, but I don't really know what else to do. I tried to drill it out and my drill bit wasn't making very much progress. So in the interest of not screwing it up any further, we might have to make a trip over to Freedom Motor Works to get some help. Uh, I'm sure JT will be able to get it out. We'll see, I'll update you guys with that when that's all done. I'm just going to uh, get my trunk back together and I'll report back once I fix the pulley issue and get the tune flashed on. So I'll see you in a couple days. All right guys, the Mustang's all done. We did have to go over to Freedom Motor Works. So let me explain to you guys exactly what I screwed up. When I was installing the new supercharger pulley here, I broke one of the uh, the original bolts uh, while torquing it down to spec. I don't know if they were over tightened or if they were just like old bolts that had lost some level of integrity. Um, when I removed the pulley, the screw, the back of the screw had kind of gone, uh, when I tried to drill it out, it kind of went through actually a little more and was obstructing where the hub actually like is pressed on. Basically the way this works is this pulley is connected to a hub that is pressed onto the snout of the supercharger. So when I tried to drill the bolt out, I actually ended up pushing it in more. And then the, it, that bolt was then making contact with uh, the snout itself. So I couldn't even like drive the car and baby it with just five bolts in because it would have been making contact and just chewing up the snout the whole time. So I got the car towed over to Freedom Motor Works. They took care of everything, not a problem. Uh, big shout out to JT over there, always saving my butt whenever I screw something up. Uh, in this case, Basically all he had to do was order a new hub from VMP and he just removed the supercharger, pulled the uh, the old hub off, pressed a new one on. I don't have tools to, to press something on like that, so I needed his help. Uh, and then he installed 
uh, the pulley with the bolts that VMP provided with their hub. So you can see they're a little bit smaller than the uh, the factory bolts, but they're a higher grade steel. They're, they're a lot stronger and uh, it's running good now. So I just got back from the dealership, I had the phase two tune flashed. Uh, my first thoughts already are that uh, the car definitely runs a lot smoother. Before, aside from having more horsepower, right, because they say instead of 670 horsepower, I have 727 horsepower right now, okay? So, uh, according to the boost gauge, it is making more boost. Um, the phase one kit makes about nine and a half pounds of boost. It makes about 12 now under full throttle. And the other thing that I noticed is drivability is really improved. Specifically, the car used to hesitate a little bit around between 2,800 and 3,200 RPMs. Around that three grand mark, the car would hesitate slightly when you were wide open. Um, it doesn't do that anymore, so that's really nice. Uh, I used to think that it was the traction control pulling, pulling power, but it always happened in the same spot and it would happen even if I turned traction control off. So I think that was just like the phase one, some drivability issue in the phase one tune. Uh, that fortunately is no longer there. So I did do uh, a really quick wide open pull merging onto the interstate on my way home from the dealership and it was totally linear all the way through the power band. So that's good, just you know, better, better drivability. There's obviously more power. Car didn't hook up too great because it's cold outside right now. So, you know, aside from that, it wasn't, it didn't feel like it was hesitating at all. So that's good. Um, the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go back to Freedom Motor Works with this car and throw it on the dyno. I'm gonna end this video right now just so this kind of concludes the installation process for the phase two supercharger kit. Um, kind of showed you guys the mistakes I made along the way. The torque specs for these bolts are not tight. It's like eight to 12 Newton meters, I think, which it comes out to like six or seven pound feet if I remember correctly. So just just be careful. I would say if, if you're doing this yourself, it can't hurt to get a new set of bolts. So I would probably do that. I think there were, uh, I don't remember what size the bolts were, but it can't it can't hurt to run to the hardware store and just get a new set of bolts in case your bolts are just old and weak like mine apparently were. I was using a torque wrench, so uh, I'm you know I'm not sure I'm not sure how they were weakened, but I also didn't install it in the first place. Could have been over tightened, like I said. Could have just been that the bolts were weak from age. I don't you know from I don't know many different heat cycles. I, I really don't know what what caused them to lose integrity, but at any rate. Uh, can't hurt to get a new set of bolts. That's the only thing I would recommend. Uh, super easy. Installing the um, the fuel pump booster in the back is really easy. It's plug and play. I showed you that already. You saw me do the spark plugs, and then it's just simply swapping out the pulley. So that's pretty much it. Uh, as usual, I hope this video was helpful, and I'll see you guys next time. So reach for the stars,